gremlins! You know me for my digital art, but I have a lot of creative hobbies. One of those hobbies is sewing frogs. I love frogs, and sewing helps relax me and keep my hands busy, so I've made a lot of them. These are just a few with unique designs. Today, I'm going to be turning these three frogs into characters. I have several more frogs that can be turned into interesting characters, so part two will be coming out at some point. First, my moss frog. This was the first frog I tried to embroider, and it made me fall in love with embroidery. My vision for this character is a forest person, the kind of person that goes and touches all the moss and plants, forages mushrooms, and collects bugs and rocks. The beginning of this drawing was pretty rocky. I repeatedly restarted the basic sketch before finally getting a pose that looked decent. Even so, the pose isn't as interesting as what I would have liked. I decided to make this character androgynous, and gave them a sweater, cargo pants, converse, and messy short hair. To make the clothing look properly baggy, I added a lot of wrinkle lines in my sketch. I was drawing inspiration from moss core, gremlin core, and other foresty aesthetics for this outfit inspiration. These are aesthetics I'm drawn to, hence the reason I created a mossy frog in the first place. For my colour scheme, I was directly drawing from the colours I used for the frog, but added more shades of brown than were originally used. Now I finished the colouring and shading, and had finished the screen recording of my art, thinking I was done. However, looking back at the character, they really did not look interesting enough, so I went back and changed up the sweater. The frog I based this character off of has an embroidered moss pattern on its back, and I put the same pattern on the character's sweater. Each different colour and pattern of moss creation was a copy of the embroidery I did. I also went back and shifted the moss patches around to make the sweater look more unique and less uniform. I was a little rusty going into this drawing, after not working on any character art for weeks due to my busy schedule. However, I think they came out pretty well. Their name is Moss. On to the next character. Next, this is one of my favourite frogs. Its fly agaric mushroom hat is removable, and I also made an ink cap mushroom hat, although I prefer the pop of red on green. When I had the idea to make characters based on my frogs, this was the first character I had a vision for. I knew I wanted him to have overalls and a mushroom hat. Once again, I had some difficulty with the pose, specifically this one leg. However, I eventually got it sorted. I had some trouble with the hat as well. My original vision was to have a full mushroom cap as the hat, but it didn't feel right when I sketched it. I then moved on to drawing a beanie, but the silhouette just wasn't working. It wasn't until I turned the face so that it wasn't facing directly ahead that I was able to make the beanie work. The face was also a little difficult. I'm not as good at making masculine faces as I am feminine ones. Once again for colours, I used the colours used in the frog. This meant I only used dark green, red, white, and some black. The hat is red and white polka dotted, just like the cap of a fly agaric mushroom, the classic toadstool look. I thought about giving him green hair, but decided to go with natural brown instead. I gave him a pair of dark green overalls and some red converse. The frog I sewed has black button eyes, so I gave this character very dark brown eyes, almost black. All in all, the character came out pretty well, although not exactly as I had pictured him before I started. I've named him Myko, because mycology is the study of mushrooms. Now onto the final character for today. I really like this frog, but the creation of it was a pain. I had no white embroidery thread, so the daisies are embroidered with regular white yarn. I do not recommend using yarn for embroidery, it is a pain. I knew right away that this frog would be turned into a cottagecore character. She needs to look like she's about to go on a picnic in a wildflower meadow. I started by giving her a straw hat that has ribbons and flowers around the brim. She has a flowing summer dress patterned with daisies and a basket of baked goods for her picnic. I gave her braids and sandals and a puffy sleeved shirt. This was the easiest sketch out of the three in this video. The pose came together really well, and I didn't have to keep redrawing much. The longest part of the outlining was drawing the flower pattern on her dress. I also usually save the shading for the end, but in this case I shaded the folds of the dress before colouring anything else. I've learned that when I have a lot of draped fabric like this, trying to shade it smoothly on the same layer as the rest of the character makes it way harder than it should be. I should be using this method from now on. On to the rest of the colouring. Hello, this is Unscripted Editing Green here. I realized I did not explain this well at all while I was editing the audio. What I mean is, I have one layer that I do all the shading on usually, and when I try to shade fabric on that layer, like flowy fabric, where it's long strips of smooth shading, like on this skirt, 
trying to do that shading and also shading the arms that are on top of the skirt or the legs that are underneath it, it just messes up the blending that I do. So this method means that I have one layer that shades the fabric and a different layer that I shaded the rest of the character in later. I hope that makes a little bit more sense. This character has a light green, white, and yellow colour scheme. The flowers on her dress probably would have looked nicer if they were smaller, but the large pattern more closely matches the frog inspiration. Also, drawing smaller flowers would have meant I would draw more flowers, and I don't have that kind of attention span. Small patterns are very tedious to draw. Once the dress was done, I moved on to colour the hat, then the hair and skin. The hat is straw, light brown, and with a bright ribbon and daisies around the brim. I gave this character light blonde hair. As I continued the colouring of the skin, you'll notice that I completely forgot that her sandals also needed colouring, and I interrupted my skin colouring to do the sandals. Now all that's left is the rest of the shading, a simple background and a name. Her name is Daisy. I love her. Thank you for watching this video, and sorry it took so long. April was extremely busy for me, and May will be the same, so videos will probably still be irregular. The next video will hopefully be part two of my frogs' as characters, but I don't know when that will be ready. Thank you for your patience. Please like this video and subscribe if you want to see more. Bye!